Hello everyone, this is Jason from Primetime Aquatics and I am super excited to bring you a fish room tour. The first one of 2022, it has been a year and a half since we've shown you all the tanks in our fish room. There are about 80 of them. This is going to be part one. We're gonna take a look at the low boy behind me. There's a couple of 20 gallons I wanna show you as well as all the 20 gallon longs on this side of the fish room with some 10 gallons. There are some other tanks off the camera 37 gallon and 23 gallon bow front we're going to take a look at as well. A lot has changed in the last year and a half. By the way, if you want more information on some of the fish that we are featuring in this fish room tour, check out the description below. We're going to have a lot of species profiles down there in case you want to learn more. Appreciate you being here. Hope you enjoy the video. So welcome to the 2022 fish room tour. Like I said, it's been a long time since we've done this. We're going to start on this side of the fish room later on. We'll go to the other side. For today, we are going to be breaking this side up into thirds. So this is going to be the first part of a three-part series on this side of the fish room. Then we'll have more parts on the other side. If you're watching this after it releases, I will put the other parts of the fish room tour down in the description below. But we're going to be looking at the 50-gallon low boy as well as these 20-gallon tanks here. The 50-gallon low boy has been a centerpiece tank for us in the fish room for a very long time. And this particular tank houses our multi-shell dwellers, otherwise known as Neolampelagus multifasciatus. Again, it is a shell dweller. These fish stay tiny. Again, just a reminder, if you want more information on a lot of the fish that we feature today, check out the description below. We'll have a lot of species profiles. I love this tank. And so what we have going on here, probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 200 or 250 multis in this tank, including all the little fry. There's only one Phoenix Stingray light on this. It's a four foot light. We do run two sponge filters. And then just for the mechanical filtration, we did add an Oasi hang on back filter, the BioStyle 50, which I'm really liking so far. And that just pulls out some of the particulate matter because the Maltese can be kind of messy when they are spitting out sand and rearranging things and moving shells. And so we like to try to keep the water clear with the hang on back filter. And as you can see, they're doing great. We have bred at this point thousands of these Maltese and we've pulled out probably at least a thousand Maltese out of this tank alone. We have them in a couple tanks as you'll see throughout the different parts of the fish room tour. They're pretty easy to care for. Uh, as long as you've got the water parameters for them, our water parameters are around a pH of eight to 8.2 general hardness and cage around 10 so it's really good for these fish in particular now right underneath this tank we have a couple standard 20 gallons and they're very different fish in both of these tanks and they're really both quite interesting we breed them both a lot so in this first tank, these are our tiger limia. These are live bears. These are probably my favorite live bear, I think, at this point. I know that's a bold statement because there's a lot of really nice guppies and platies and mollies and sword tails. I really like the behavior of the tiger limia. I like the color. It's not all that often when you see a fish that brings in a green hue and a yellow hue that really just looks outstanding with those black vertical bars. It really just kind of pops. As you can see, they are fairly prolific breeders. It does often take some patience, however, to get them to breed. I think we had these in our fish room for probably four to six months before we ever saw fry. And unlike what you would see with a lot of the platy and guppy fry, a lot of the fry from the tiger limia actually like to hang out at the bottom as well as the top. So it's kind of cool. We do have some other fish in here. We have some Hebrosis cory cats. We also have a L10A lizard tail pleckle that I just, it did not come out. Didn't feel like ripping the scape apart to try to find the fish. And here we have our Neolampelagus caudopunctatus, otherwise known as the caudopunks. These are the red fin variety. If you've been watching the channel for any length of time, you know that we had a disaster about a year ago in this tank where the sponge filter hose was disconnected and we lost all of our caudopunctatus in this tank and another one. And we were down to nine. 
it took a while for them to start breeding again, but they did eventually start breeding once again, and that's why you're seeing the fry here. I absolutely love these fish. I love the bright blue eyes. And you're going to see as we go through this tank, every once in a while you'll see both the males and females get these dark vertical bars. It's basically a warning to the other fish. Usually that means that they are protecting eggs or possibly some fry. We've got multiple pairs in this tank. Like I said, we had nine adults left. They all wound up in here. And we've got two pairs at this point that will breed. You can see the fish back there with those bars. That just means, hey, stay away. I'm protecting something. And for the most part, the other fish will pay attention to that and stay clear of that area. This is the other part of the fish room I wanted to look at today. We got some 10 gallons over here on the right hand side. There's some 20 longs over there. There's a couple of tanks that you're going to see a, a bow front and a 37 gallon that's kind of off to the side. I'll show you that towards the end. This is a 20 long. These are Julitochromus ornatus. This is a fish, probably my favorite rock dweller. I absolutely love the color, love the personality. We call them our little pencils inside the fish room. When I last showed you these fish about a year and a half ago at the, in the tour, we had about a half a dozen and they were not breeding for us. These fish took a long time to finally start breeding, but once they did, as you can see, they started producing a lot of fry. They don't produce a lot of fry at once, but we started getting fry on a more regular basis. There's a couple different pairs in here. Yeah, we've got the guppy grass. I just like the way it looks. No, it's not a biotope or a biotype. I just think it offers a little bit more security to some of the smaller fish and maybe some of the other pairs. Cuts down on aggression. Absolutely love these fish. We're probably going to incorporate them into our larger Lake Tanganyikan setups that we have throughout the fish room. But we've already pulled 10 or 15 out of this tank and brought them to swaps. So it was a little bit more crowded, but it, you really can't go wrong. If you're looking at Lake Tanganyikan cichlids from Africa, this is certainly one worth considering. There's not a lot going on in these three 10 gallons right now. In fact, there are only fish in the top one. So I'm gonna go through this one a little bit quickly. These are for the most part quarantine tanks and holding tanks for us for fish that we generally bring to swaps. These are the dwarf rasbora. We've done a species profile on them. At one point, this tank had a lot of them. We've sold a lot. I love this fish. They are absolutely tiny and stay that way. This is about as big as they're gonna get somewhere between a half inch and three quarters of an inch. They're thinner bodied fish, which is cool. But as you can see, they also have a lot of really nice color, which I think is one of the reasons why people really like to keep these in smaller nano tanks. Like I said, even here, we've got well over 50 to 75 in a 10 gallon. This tank, I just wanted to show you because I think it's cool. It's our Java Moss tank. There are no fish in here right now. I am considering putting some fish in that are egg scatterers. See if we can't get some fry out of this tank. Here we're looking at some 20 gallon longs. These are, this was under the Ornatus tank I showed you. This tank has been set up like this forever. It is a super red bristlenose breeding tank. They very rarely give us fry right now. But we still do have a half a dozen in here or so, and you will see them from time to time hanging out in the caves. So I'm hopeful that they're going to be giving us some fry here in the relatively near future. One of the interesting things about this tank, however, is all of the shrimp. I originally put in about a half a dozen cherry shrimp, and they kept reproducing, and I'm getting all kinds of different colors. You can see the cherries throughout. There are some blue shrimp in here. I've got almost like a black rose type shrimp. There are orange, there are yellow. So they're throwing out all kinds of colors. This is our Neolamporologus similis tank, kind of similar to the Maltese, 20 gallon long. Really enjoy this tank. Obviously they are producing quite readily in this 20 gallon, probably about 40 or 50 or so and we've recently pulled some out and brought them to swaps. I love this fish because for the Lake Tanganyikans, these are one of the few that I think look better on a dark substrate with a dark background. You really start to see those light white or those lighter vertical stripes. 
They behave much like the Maltese do. They just look a little bit different in terms of their coloration and how many stripes they do have. Always interesting to watch the shell dwellers, just like the Maltese, these guys are great. And like I said, if you're looking to get into shell dwellers, the multifasciatus that I showed you earlier and the similas are probably your two best options. These are a little bit harder to find than the Maltese, but every bit is entertaining. Right above the Simulus tank, we have these platies. It's a mixed platy tank. There are standard platies. There are also variatus platies in this tank. This is a really exciting tank to watch. If you haven't kept platies in a while, while or you think they are beginner fish, I highly recommend give them a try. If it's been a little while, I think you'll remember why they are so entertaining. They are always on the go, always searching for food. We leave a little bit of that green hair algae in the tank because the fry like to pick at it quite a bit. A little bit of hornwort and duckweed at the top again allows the fry a little bit of protection. But for the most part, we're not seeing a lot of fry predation because we don't generally feed our platies very well. And that keeps the adults from eating all the fry. But we're getting an interesting mix of fry because I'm not exactly sure which ones are breeding at any given time. And so we're seeing some mixes where we've got some platies with nice deep orange bodies with darker tails. And then we have some with lighter tails and, and darker bodies. There's all kinds of different combinations here. This is a 23 gallon bow front. Two things going on here. We've got some long fin green dragon plecos. Unfortunately, they were all hiding. So there's one on the front of the glass. Not super awesome to look at right now because of the angle. What also what we also think is interesting about this tank is the crypts look phenomenal. And we have some orange neocaridina in here, the pumpkin shrimp. We haven't really been culling this tank very well, so the orange color is not the best. We do have some really nice orange individuals, but as an overall group, maybe not as orange as they used to be. This is the last tank I want to show you today. This is a 37 gallon, same dimensions as a 29. This is our breeding tank for our Neolampelagus brichardi. We pull lots of fish out of here. It doesn't look great because the whole purpose of the tank is for breeding. But that is part one of what's going to be a many part fish room tour. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, check out the description below as we start adding more. I will make sure to put those down there. We'll have part two coming out with some really cool fish, some of which you have not seen. Appreciate you being here and we'll see you in the next one.